You know our next guest from shows like The Big Bang Theory and True Blood. She stars in Night Court, which airs Tuesday nights at 8 right here on NBC. Let's take a look. I know that what I did wasn't technically legal, but I was pushing boundaries like I do with you. It's why we're friends and you love that about me. I don't love that about you. I don't even like you. But I'm baby Heather. Your Honor, in light of this contentious discourse, I'm wondering if maybe you would consider recusing yourself? Oh, you think? <laughs> Please welcome back to the show, Melissa Roush, everybody. I'm lovely. I'm so happy to have you here uh, back on the East Coast. I'm back on the East Coast. Grew up in New Jersey. 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 Jersey in the house. I, I hate Jersey. when that happens. It's always the very back row. <laughs> that's, that's where Jersey sits. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Those are my people. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> that's my family. Now, uh, you, I, we have uh, children of similar ages. And I'm wondering, do, are you, do you seeing any of your own insecurities in your kids as they get a little bit older? It's interesting. I do feel like being a parent just brings up any unresolved issues yes. that you have. And I'm realizing that I have some majorly unresolved, like latent bullying issues that I never got over. Like we were recently at a kid's birthday party at like a paint your own pottery place. And this kid came up to me and he's like, we were all talking, we wanna know, are you an adult or a kid? <laughs> and I, I felt so triggered and I genuinely wanted to know who he meant by we. And it came out as, oh yeah, who wants to know who's the we? <laughs> And my husband's like, that's a little aggressive. <laughs> but I'm a preschooler. And so, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna reset. And I said, you know, it's people come in all shapes and sizes, and I happen to be on the smaller side. And he's like, oh no, we all know you're short. We've seen you, it's just you're covered in paint. <laughs> I was like, all right. So it was about great. being bad at painting. It was about being bad, like, and just <laughs> dripping myself in paint like a toddler. Yeah. By the way, nothing says you're from uh, New Jersey more than, oh, who's the we? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Who's this week? You tell me. <laughs> I like that you like. You also wanted to roll up the whole group. You're like, I can't just cut off the head of this oh, thing. No. I got to figure out who exactly. these are. Exactly, it's gonna pop up. <laughs> yeah, exactly, you're gonna use him against to, to testify against the others. Exactly. Um, what's it like now when you uh, go back home? I mean, you still have family here when I you visit do. New Jersey. Is it nice? It's so nice. It's very nice being back home. We do a lot of like looking through old home videos and showing them to my kids. My mom actually pulled out an old home video of a community theater production of Annie, a very Jersey. All right, Annie. so now Jeff. you were Annie. I was Annie. Uh, okay. How old is this Annie here? Um, I, no, that's, um, I'm about 13. All right, and yeah. so what's a Jersey Annie? It's a lot of tomorrow, tomorrow. <laughs> I love you, tomorrow. That's Sandy, it's my dog, Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have to say, like, I kind of only want to see New Jersey Annie now. It's pretty great. It's pretty great. I mean, I, I feel... might revive it. Yeah. Jersey, you ready? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so another thing is, uh, which I'm very delighted by, your mother has been uh, trolling you. Yes. Now, first of all, I'm very <laughs> impressed because she's trolling you with a meme, which is so beyond the comprehension of my mother. Like, <laughs> first, I don't even think she'd know what any of the I, words mean. That's what shows, it's completely shocking because it's very much not like my mother. So someone must have showed her, maybe those kids from the, yeah. the lottery party have yeah. gotten her. But she sends me <laughs> <laughs> these, these pictures um, whenever I'm on the phone with her or saying anything that I'm saying with confidence that I'm maybe not 100% correct with, she sends me this meme from me uh, on Celebrity Jeopardy where I was not sure of my answer. Wait, and so said, you said yeah. this on Celebrity Jeopardy. <laughs> I did. Yes, I'm sure about it. Now this was an actual moment that became a meme because even everybody watching knew you weren't sure. Exactly, and, and I knew I wasn't sure. Okay, yes. gotcha. Do you remember what the question was that you were you not know, sure about? I don't remember. I think I completely blacked out on that entire experience. Yeah. I, anything that, just the idea of being questioned, it didn't matter what the question was. It was so much pressure. That, I yeah. will say, no, Ken, we're yeah. both performers. We've been in front of an audience. That strikes me as the most stressful thing you could possibly do. It was, and it's also for charities you really want to do well. And, and any question they ask is, ah, 
was terrifying. Did your charity reach out afterwards and say, like, thanks a for nothing? <laughs> luckily, <laughs> luckily, it's a charity that I started, so I was letting myself down. Oh, gotcha. But so still. it was a racket. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so let me, just to clarify, you started a charity so for yourself Jeopardy. and then raised money for it on Jeopardy. Okay, great. Congratulations. I'm from Jersey. What do you want? It would be so funny if there had been a Sopranos episode where Tony starts his own charity and goes on Jeopardy. <laughs> it's for a good cause. <laughs> yeah, give me a break. Um, so you, uh, your co-star, who was in the clip, the great John Larroquette, a giant in comedy, also oh a physical giant. He is. He, he is. is. What, I could not believe it. I think he's 6'4". He's 6'4". He towers over me, and I tower over you. So <laughs> what is it like on set with the great oh uh, John Larroquette? It's, it's the best. But it's, I also feel there's a major imbalance in our relationship because I, like you said, I get to work with the, the amazing comedic force that is John. He is brilliant in every way. He's 6'4". He's got this voice that is like this hot brick of butter. Like he's just, yeah. he's amazing. And he saunters onto set and everyone, just your eyes go to him because he's this incredible, powerful human being. Um, I, and I also think about John, you know that song, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Yeah. I believe that they have gone into John Lerner. Okay. That is... That <laughs> he is, holds all the old cowboys? Yeah, he's just, he's just a cowboy. He's yeah. so... He's just a powerful presence. <laughs> Me, on the other hand, I hang on him like I am an elf on the shelf. <laughs> and I'm so excited to see him every day that I get to work with this man, that I greet him like an excited cocker spaniel every day. Like, John, how you doing? How's your weekend? Wanna have lunch? Wanna talk? How's that? And he's so kind and so wonderful with me and like just graciously accepts me hanging on him and my hugs. <laughs> but there, our wonderful writers on the show came up with a line for the season uh, premiere um, where he says to my character, you're like a puppet I wouldn't want to buy. And like, it just <laughs> encapsulates our entire relationship. <laughs> like, that's perfect. Uh, you have uh, wonderful guest stars on the show. Um, that was Jessica St. Clair. Yes, uh, one of my best friends in, in real life. life mm -hmm. And she's uh, just a delight. And then one of your uh, Big Bang uh, Theory uh, co-stars here. Yes. Um, and so just tell me, uh, when uh, someone uh, uh, like Canal comes on the show, mm -hmm. Like, in front of a live audience, it just must be uh, such a delight, like the Big Bang Theory days. I mean, oh people gosh. must go nuts. It was a dream. When he came out, the audience didn't know that he was going to be appearing in that episode, and they went absolutely wild, and I was just so filled with delight that he was there, and we had the best time all week. It was just like old times. Even that picture, actually, was a moment after Kunal is... One, he is just pure heart. He's one of the most spiritually enlightened people I know and just the most down-to-earth, wonderful human. He's also one of the most impeccably dressed humans that I've yeah, ever met. That's a very, it's a real nice coat. Yes, it's a beautiful yeah. coat. And he, for years, has given me a hard time about how I roll into work. Every, for years on Big Bang Theory, he showed up to set here, and I'm a producer on the show too, and he's like, Melissa. <laughs> Still, this is still, you're a producer now. You're people's boss. Please put on something nice. And uh, Lakrita, who plays our wonderful bailiff, she was like, well, you guys aren't dressed too differently. You're both wearing black. And he's like, what are you talking about, Lakrita? This is nuts. I am in designer clothing and she's in Forever 21. This is not okay. Uh, and then, so that picture was taken after he gave me a hard time for my He still my seems sweat a pants. little upset about he's it. He's so yeah. angry at me. <laughs> Uh, what a delight to have you back. Congratulations you. on the continued success Thank you of the so show. Much. Thank you. you guys, this is our friend Melissa Roush, Night Courts, Tuesday nights at 8 here on NBC. We'll be right back with more Night Night.